Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 779. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Excel Magic Trick 779 to 786, click on the link below the video. Hey, in this video here, we have a data set, and we want to see how to create a little cross tabulated table. And the criteria comes in two form. We have a month, which is a word, a year, which is a number. And we need to, from a word and a number, match this against serial numbers. Now, serial numbers, dates are always serial numbers, a number of days since December 31st, 1899. So how in the world do you match word criteria to that? Well, oftentimes, and I've done many videos on this, if I scroll on in here, um, we could see the sum product. You use the sum product in text. From that whole column there, you can use the text function and format it as month and year and it will show up as partially a word, partially as text. Ah, but the text function takes a, and the sum product with double negative, it's great, but it takes a little bit longer to calculate than sum if, or sum ifs with an S in our case, because we're going to have, even though it looks like we have two, three criteria, we're going to combine these two into one, so there'll be one, two. So we want, that's what we want to see in this video. So we're going to see how to do that. And actually, I did a video a little, 10 or 15 videos ago that showed uh, how to do this, but here we'll do it with uh, a bunch of cells instead of a single cell. Well, we're going to use some ifs. Some ifs is great. It can count with multiple criteria. The sum range, I'm going to scroll over and get my sales. Click there, Control Shift Down Arrow, and then F4 to put the dollar signs in and lock. Comma, the criteria range, we're going to have uh, the date column over there and the product column. I'm going to go ahead and start with the product. I'm going to click there, control shift down arrow to jump down and highlight it all, F4 to lock it. That's the criteria range 1, comma, and the criteria uh, 1 is this. Now, as I copy the formula down, the 2, the row reference, needs to be locked, but when I move it this way, it needs to move to sunshine, so I'm going to hit the F4 key once and two times to lock only the row reference comma, and now, criteria range 2, I'm going to go over and get my date, control shift down arrow F4, the F4 key is great because it jumps the formula back in view and puts the dollar sign in, comma, and here's where we do our trickery. We can, um, and actually we have to use that date column twice because we need to or, um, take this date but if we really want the month, we're going to have to say greater than or equal to April 1st, 2010, and less than or equal to the last day in April. So actually, we're going to have to use criteria to that, sorry, this criteria range 2. We're actually going to have to repeat it over in 3, but no problem. For this criteria, we're going to say greater than or equal to April 1st, 2010. Watch this. We're going to, in double quotes, say greater than or equal to. The equal is because we want to include the first of the month. And actually, we can put a 1 right here. Now, this trick comes from the fact that if we have 1 April 2010, and it will be text because we're concatenating it all. It will understand that as a date. So I, the trick is to put a 1 there, and then the join symbol, shift 7, which is ampersand April, and then ampersand again, shift 7 for that. Now this whole thing right here, when we evaluate it, it's one single text string, and sum ifs, count ifs, count if, sum if, all those functions understand criteria as, as a text string. So I'm going to hit F9 to evaluate it and show there it is. That will work. Control Z. Now we have to think about cell references. When we copy the formula this way, we want it locked on these row headers. But when we copy the formula down, the 3 and 3 need to move to 4. So I'm simply going to put my cursor in that F3 and hit 1, 2, 3 times. I hit the F4 key. 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm locking the column reference, but not the row. All right, so that's criteria two. Now, comma and criteria range three, I'm just going to copy this. This is probably more dangerous. And then control V, comma. And now, I could say do the same thing on 
say, less than this date right here. But when I copy the formula down, when it gets to the last one, it would be looking at blank. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the end of month, end of month function, right? The start date. I'm going to take this right here, copy, paste it right here, put a double quotes. And lo and behold, if I highlight this, notice I'm not putting the um, greater than symbol. I mean, yeah, the greater than. I'm, I'm just putting the actual um, date here. If I hit F9, that gives me 1 April 2010. And the end of the month function will understand that. Well, what does end of month do? Control Z to not hard code that in. End of month says, give me a date and I'll tell you what the end of the month is. Now, end of next month, comma, would be 1. End of last month would be minus 1. And end of this month is 0. Now, that's not quite it, but let's just see if it gives us a, a date. I'm going to F9. There is the serial number for the end of April. So I'm going to Control Z. And now I'm going to, um, because this criteria has to be less than or equal to, I'm going to say in double quotes, less than or equal to, double quotes, and then join that. That's pretty wild there. That is pretty wild. I'm going to hit F9, and you can see, sure enough, it works. Control Z. Now, that's criteria three. We close parentheses and Control Enter. And there we get the same number. I'm going to copy this over, and I'm going to copy it down. And I think. I had the same format as this, meaning accounting here, uh, accounting without dollar sign here. So I'm going to try to click the Smart tag and say Fill without formatting. And sure enough, there it is. Now, we really want to test this, so I'm going to come to the end. And that is one wild formula that is calculating a lot faster than the sum ifs. Now, I actually didn't uh, time these in a large data set, but I have done time tests and compared sum ifs to some product with double negative in text, and it's this, they were a lot faster. And so that one is working. We can see our row headers, uh, column headers, and row headers there. There you go. Now, how would we uh, do this for counting? I'm going to copy this. Actually, no. Copy that cell. I'm going to paste it down here. I'm going to immediately smart point to this smart tag and say this one right here. This is paste the formula only, because for counting, I don't want a dollar sign. Now, I'm going to change this function to count ifs. And then we have one count ifs with an s. And we should have one criteria range too much. Uh, we had three uh, entries up there. The one we didn't need is the sum range. And so there we have it. Uh, this h2, however, right there. These ones move down properly to the cell, but I really want this H2 pointing right there, so I'm just going to change it to 16. And so now you can see the green right there. So that will work. That's basically the same thing without the sum range. Control Enter, and then I'm going to copy it down. And then check the one in the corner, and sure enough, it's looking at all of the right row headers and column headers. That is a much faster way to match some word criteria for dates against serial numbers than using some product and text. We'll see you next trick.